Sometimes when you get an old server motherboard in and it's got support for two X5677 Xeons, there's a setting in the BIOS called NUMA. And I've heard from people in the past that having this setting enabled can increase your FPS in games. And then on the other hand, I've also heard people say having this setting disabled can increase your FPS. And today we're gonna to be putting this to the test where we're gonna be testing out both enabled and disabled to see if it really does make a difference having this thing on or off. But before we get into it, what exactly is NUMA? Well, it stands for Non-Uniform Memory Access, in that if you've got this setting enabled, it will allow a CPU in a dual CPU configuration, for example, to access the memory that it's tied into locally faster than it would access the memory tied in locally to the other CPU. And so if you disable this, for example, then the memory will be accessed at the same speed from both CPUs, regardless of where it is. So technically, if an application has been programmed well, then it should be able to benefit from having this setting enabled. Though with the case with programs and even games, we know that a lot of these games out there aren't programmed well. If you're a PC gamer and you've been gaming for a while, you'll definitely be able to attest to this, especially when it comes to console ports. Though since we just came off the back of putting this system together, where if you haven't seen that video, I'll put the link up here, we did run a number of different tests, both at 1080p and 1440p, as well as some streaming benchmarks. Though, now we're finally gonna disable this setting and compare it with the setting enabled to see how much of a difference there is in FPS. Though before we do, a quick message from today's video sponsor. If you're trying to play games with your friends and they can't hear you over all the white noise on your mic, or you've just got terrible onboard audio, then Creative's G3 is the solution for you. A USB portable DAC amp solution with a good and solid mic in port, as well as having enough power to push through that bass properly on your headphones and the ability to plug up to a console and give you better audio, this is the solution you've been looking for. Links in the description below to find out more. So running through the specs of this system, it's an old super micro motherboard with support for two X5500 Xeons or X5600 Xeons. The X5600 series is the better pick, being on 32 nanometer and supporting up to six cores and 12 threads. Though the CPUs we've used here today are the X5677s. They're four cores, eight threads each, and they have a base clock of 3.46 gigahertz. So combining them now gives us eight cores and 16 threads. We've also got 16 gigabytes of ECC registered memory, which is another benefit since that memory can be had for very cheap. So if you're able to pick up one of these motherboards, you can get a lot of price performance for your dollar. And the graphics card we're going with is the 5500 XT. Though the first title we're pulling up here is CSGO, where max FPS is desirable from not only pros, but pretty much anyone who wants to be competitive in this game. And what we saw here with Numa enabled was that at both 1080p and 1440p, we were getting way better FPS than having Numa disabled. It was to the tune of roughly 25% at both resolutions, not to mention the 0.1% lows fared a lot better as opposed to having NUMA disabled. So when it comes to this title in particular, you will definitely want to have NUMA enabled on an old CPU like this. Moving on to Warhammer Chaos Bane, we had here at 1080p and 1440p pretty much the exact same results on both sides of the fence with NUMA enabled and NUMA disabled. It was one of the first titles I've seen where I've got exact identical FPS at these resolutions. So in other words, even at 1080p, this game is CPU bound. But what we saw in the differences between NUMA on versus off was that there was a significant boost in FPS to the tune of roughly 33%, going from 66 and 65 to 86. And actually it was funny because it was the first time I've done benchmarking where I've seen the 1440p numbers beat the 1080p numbers. Even though it was just by one FPS, it was funny to see this with the NUMA disabled setting. Next up is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. At 1080p, we got a victory with NUMA enabled, scoring roughly about 10% uh, more performance at uh, 1080p, though moving over to 1440p, saw us get pretty much identical average FPS, and the minimum was only one lower. Strange Brigade followed in a similar trend to that of Shadow of the Tomb Raider, scoring identical FPS both at 1080p and 1440p. 
Though I do know with my testing in the past that this is an extremely well optimized title, even to the point where if you've got a low clocked memory, like 2133 megahertz memory in a single stick, you're not gonna be getting much of a difference having even 3600 megahertz memory, even with a higher end graphics card. And for the last title, we've got none other than Fortnite. And we've got here on low settings with the uh, distance set to Epic. This is apparently what the pros like to use. And we saw here at uh, 1080p, we did get a significant boost in FPS going from 162 to 194. Though at 1440p, we then went from 159 to 166. So 1440p seemed to even out the odds, but of course, at this resolution, the GPU is starting to get more stressed than the CPU is, hence why uh, the 1440p numbers showed a drop on both sides, but it was more significant on the Numa enabled side since that was getting more FPS at 1080p to begin with. So basically out of those five titles I tested, I got enough information here to say simply leave Numa on if you're gaming on older Xeons like this on a dual socket motherboard. This setting in particular, the Numa, I believe it's uh, had some good progression in the last few years, especially thanks to AMD's collaboration with Microsoft in uh, respects to their Threadripper CPUs, which do utilize this setting. And since they are high-end desktop consumer parts, they are in ways designed for Windows 10 users. And we know for a fact, just like those 11 herbs and secret spices, that the kernel is super important. <laughs> When it comes to an OS, it's basically the core of an OS. And so AMD have collaborated with Microsoft, especially with their Ryzen Threadripper chips. And since these were made for high-end desktop users, which a lot of those users use Windows 10, this has received really good updates over the last few years. And those updates have been able to span over now to these dual Xeon setups and make them much more viable in Windows 10 environment, not just for games, but other productivity applications too. So in a nutshell, if you're building a dual socket system, then definitely leave this setting on and set and forget. And another thing I did do on this system, which I do on a lot of older Xeons and i7 2600s and stuff like that, for example, is I disable the Spectrum Meltdown updates. Since I'm an individual user, I don't have any virtual machines or no one else is on my network that can steal my data, I don't believe in leaving this setting on. Though the performance differences between disabling this and enabling this are quite significant too. If you wanna to check out more info on that, I'll put the link to that video up here. Though do let us know in the comments section below what you think about this NUMA setting. Have you tried enabling, disabling it in the past? Have you got any anomalies that differ from today's results? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And we've got the question of the day here which comes from Hitcham Guchita. And they ask, should I flash the RX 480 to RX 580? And this is coming off the back of our previous video that we did where we were flashing a RX 5700 into a 5700 XT. And basically I've found in the past with flashing RX 480s to 580s, it can sometimes work. Sometimes it'll work and it just won't work properly in that once you load up your games, you may get some flickering. And in other words, the either the GPU core or the memory on that RX 480 just aren't up to the task of running at those RX 580 speeds. So with that one, it is a gamble uh, I don't know if you should try it or not, it's up to you. If you're pretty well versed in custom flashing GPUs and you know how to flash your way back if something happens, then you can definitely try it. But if you don't really know what you're doing or if it's your first time flashing, I would advise against. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us. And if you stayed this far, and as always, you're enjoying that content and you wanna see it the moment it drops, then you hit that sub, ring that bell, and I'll see you in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.